Howdy, y'all. Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And today, we all float. I guess that's what I've heard anyway. So, there's already one problem, which is that Vetches seems to have placed wonderful, stupid little spawners in a inconvenient location for me. So, I'm going to want to take some cobblestone here, kind of climb out above where those spawners are, I think. And I believe that if I place a block of sand right here, it should collapse the air pocket underneath where the spawner is. I'm not certain of that 100%, though. So, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and kill this creeper, who is now deceased. Wonderful. Our plan is underway already, apparently. Oh, good. Nope. Another creeper's here. So, maybe my creeper decimation plan was a failure. I might have to admit that. Hmm. So, the sand didn't actually break the seal. What could I do to break the seal instead? Now, I think, is that because the sand landed inside of that little bubble? Now, if I go one outside of the bubble here, does that break it? No, there's not. Hmm. Yeah, there's still this air pocket here. Dang it. Huh. I was hoping that I could ruin the air pocket and just, you know, and the horrible reign of creeper-related violence, but alas, that does not seem to be the case. So let's see, where is the next one of those? We are going to want to have plenty of light in here, because that makes the game, you know, watchable for you wonderful people at home. So let's go ahead also and uh, get out a ladder. Ladders are, like, the best things ever in Minecraft. Can these guys swim toward me? Or can they only swim upward? Well, that one certainly... Oh, he's glitching. Either... Or drowning. One of the two. Okay, so either way, we can now plant that like so. And seek refuge here. That'll deter spawning from that one. We'll equally have to do that there. And then again on that one. Now, in the long term, these guys will all start to drown. In the short term, I should tell you a funny story or something. So, let's see. This weekend, what did I do? I had my friend Art, who I'm working on the Pitfalls and Penguins book uh, with, come into town and uh, help me do some of the finishing touches on that. It is not indeed finished, because apparently writing a 250-page uh, book, like, I really underestimated how what, what constitutes finishing touches on something with 250 pages. Because, like, when you print a newspaper, which I did in college, um, I worked on the, the humor newspaper, um, like, it's kind of one of those things where you, you don't want to have any mistakes. You want everything to be professional and... Even in a humor newspaper, you don't want there to be typos and stuff that make you look dumb, you know, because it's it's uh, it's something you take seriously. But man, working on a 250-page book, trying to find not just typos but grammatical errors, and also because it's it's got like rules and stuff, trying to find like game logic errors, it's uh, it's pretty time-consuming. And so, whoops, we are um in the process of getting that all sol solidified, um. But yeah, I, oh, but when we were not working on that, when we took our breaks, what we would do for breaks is play Borderlands. Um, some of you guys might have heard of it. It is a first-person looter uh, made by Gearbox Software, the people who brought us um, oops, a lot of famous games like Half-Life's Blue Shift. Um, it's a pretty big deal. But anyway, so these guys... Uh, at Gearbox are pretty awesome. They make this game called Borderlands, uh, first-person looter, which means that they're... Everything is in the game is, like, all about looting. It's all about getting stuff. And so you, you go through the game, and there's just, like, a million boxes of things, and your inventory is very limited, but there's just things everywhere. 
everywhere you could possibly look for things. There are more things, in fact. You, you, there are just too many things. Is actually one of the most common complaints about the game. There's too much stuff. And I realized that um, Borderlands actually has a lot in common with society that we live in in terms of there being too much stuff. Like, there's more stuff in the real world than there is in Borderlands. Because, um, I mean, it's a game. And that game has 80 bajillion guns or something crazy like that. Why am I not wearing my shoes? Those will help me be weight weighted down properly when I go through here. And, um... Oh, yes, those guys were at the surface waiting for me. I'd forgotten about that element of this. I should really back off until I regenerate some health. So I think we will do that. Oh, yeah, that was why I wasn't hanging out on the surface. Because of fellas like that one. So where do we go? We go back inside our little ladder shelter here. And we wait. Luckily, no more creatures should spawn. Oh, yeah, they can't swim downward, I don't think. But let's just be safe about this. Wonderful. Um, all the experience I'm getting here might help me get that silk touch pick if I can actually survive this. So let's be very careful to actually, in fact, survive this. That should be a, a top priority here. Once I actually hit level 30, though, I'm probably not going to want to break any more spawners just because, uh, you know, I don't need to uh, waste any experience because it might take multiple uh, runs on that enchantment. But mm. Anyway, so we will quickly smack a little bit of this. Great. Um, and so, for example, I realized that in our kitchen cupboard we have a ton of plates. Like, we have... Uh, Marion and I had both lived on our own for several years um, before we moved in together and got married and all that. Um, and so, unlike people who had only, like, ever lived with their parents, we just had a ton of stuff already. Like, we just had uh, plates and vacuums and, and uh, utensils and all, all this stuff. And so it was one of those things where... We kind of just kept all of it. And Marion wanted me to get rid of a lot of my stuff. And I got rid of some of it. So I shouldn't say we kept all of it. But, I mean, two people's worth of, like, living equipment or whatever is a lot of stuff. And so, you know, I was initially kind of resistant to the idea of getting rid of a lot of my stuff just because I liked it and, you know, it had sentimental value. But, um, like, after playing Borderlands, I'm just like... There's too many things. You can't have them all. Throw them away. Just don't have them. Having them only makes your life harder because you want to accumulate more things later, and then you can't because, oh yeah, you already have filled your inventory with worthless stuff. Whoa! That was a dog. How did my dog get down here? Did it teleport down here? That's really weird. Okay, so there's the fleecy box there. So, we are just going to... Properly pressure treat that with light. Or light treat that. Keeping the pressure on the mobs not to spawn. And they're apparently drowning or something up there. Which makes no sense because they're, you know, in the water. Or on the water. Okay. So yeah, there's another fleecy box here. Thank you, teleporting dog who will inevitably drown. I'm sure you're doing a great job at whatever it is you're doing. And I need to not drown now myself. So let's hop in here real quick. And eat a food back in this one. Outside of the spawning range there. So yeah, playing Borderlands has gotten me just in a mood to, to look at all this stuff. It's like, what don't I need? So, you know, who can I call that might need bowls and plates? Who can I call that might need this or that? You know, I've got these t-shirts that I've been holding on to forever because of sentimental value. And at this point I'm just like... I need to just bag them up and throw them in, you know, Goodwill uh, box or whatever. Uh-oh. That might be a problem. And creeper it out. And let's go ahead and... Oh, actually, let's hop in here. Get us a little air. And then we are going to knock out this one. And we're going to knock out... Ah, that's a lot of them. Sorry, doggy. 
That was not, um, I don't even know why you're here also. Additionally, dog, like, what's your deal? I don't know. I can't claim to know. Okay. Woo, light blue wool. Can I make you see it? No, because you're inside of a glass wall. How even more helpful. Yeah, I hear you whining, but I have no sympathy. You teleported to me. Like, it's like on Star Trek when they show up and they, you know, are just like, Hey, what's this tool of black tar? Let's uh, shoot phasers at it, you know? And I'm just going to kill Tasha Yar because they came into my house and teleported around and well, what am I going to do, you know? But anyway, so, yeah, I'm just trying to get a, a real good, um, a real good grip on, like, what I do and don't need. And one of the other things, one of the other side effects of this, though, in Borderlands is you want to get rid of everything you have that isn't great, but then the things that you do have, you want to be really good. And so, like, for example, we have a really horrible vacuum that was a uh, hand-me-down, and it, was prob it probably cost nothing at the time it was purchased, and it is worth nothing now. But, um, like, we don't vacuum with it, like, but once every few months, just because the thing is such a horrible pain. And so now it's one of those things where I've got this Borderlands mentality of, hey, you know, anything that I'm not using, get rid of, and if it's in a, if the only reason I'm holding on to it is because I, I need something in that class of object, like, for example, you might say, well, I need one fire elemental weapon, and I need one acid weapon, and I need one this, and I need one that. It's like, just because I need an acid weapon doesn't mean I should hold on to the horrible one I have. It means I should go get a good one, you know? So it's just like, just because I need a vacuum cleaner doesn't mean that I should keep this super, like, lame one. It means I should go buy a good one. And if I can't buy a good one, fine, I'll hold on to this, you know, lame one for a while. So, like, I can't go buy a vacuum cleaner immediately... But, I mean, I've been thinking about it for months, and it's just kind of finally pushed me to the point where it's like, okay, so I'm going to save up and get one, you know, next month or the month after. You know, Christmas present uh, to myself or whatever. Because um, it's one of those things where it's like, if, um, you know, it, Marion isn't expected to, like, do all the cleaning and stuff. We're not, you know, a super traditional household, um, if you can't tell by my voice alone. Um or the fact that, you know, my, uh, half of my, we both work and, uh, you know, she's going to become a doctor and all that, like, you know, whatever. So anyway, um, you know, the present to her in me buying a new vacuum isn't, look, Marion, I bought you a new toy. It's, look, I bought me a new toy and now I'm going to go play with it, you know, because like if I go buy an awesome vacuum, um, like they, they make, there's some that are actually super engineered well and stuff I've been looking at, then I'll be excited about vacuuming, and then, you know, it's not one of those things where we're both kind of looking around and going, yeah, somebody needs to vacuum this, but nobody wants to lug that incredibly heavy, awkward vacuum out, so it's just not going to get done. Um, wow, am I out of torches? I might be out of torches. So, here we go. Stick. And it's one of those things where it's like, yes, I, I understand that just because the vacuum is inconvenient doesn't mean we shouldn't vacuum. But we both, like, essentially I'm working two jobs right now between, you know, making videos for y'all and my day job. And she's working two jobs because she's actually, like, in the lab more than 40 hours a week doing the whole, like, you know, working on leukemia research thing. And she's applying for medical school, which is another 20 or 30 hours a week. So, anyway, the... The more pleasant doing things we don't want to do but have to do is, the more likely they are to be done in a timely manner. Because we're already stretching ourselves pretty thin, you know? So, anyway, here we are at our lovely Victory Monument. We have got this beautiful blue wool we're just going to slap right in here. And we got that Waking Up is the name of the map, I think. By Vitches and Andy. Yay, done. Light it up. And I'm sure I found that in a specific area of waking up by Vetches and Andy. I don't remember which one. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with that water. I was distracted talking about Borderlands. While we're here, though, let's go ahead and enchant this diamond pick and see if we get Silk Touch. Silk Touch 1! Efficiency 4! Oh yeah! 
boom, headshot. We are on our way back to that um, place with the black wool and the red stone ore so we can close out this map like, wow, that was way less severe than I thought it was going to be. You know what, I don't need to bring all my extra armor with me because if I die there, I'm going to have to like go get everything. Um, I'm going to have to go get a new pick anyway, so it's not like whatever. You get what I'm saying. Anyway, until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Wait, why is that glowstone by itself hanging out up there? Did you see that? Wait, is Veg just messing with me? Is that a trap or something? There's like one glowstone block here that's just like hanging out up in the sky. Did I do that? Maybe I put that on a tree or something when I was chopping it down so mobs wouldn't spawn because I got distracted halfway through. I don't think that's a trap. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this momentary distraction of looking at that block. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.